Oh, what about you? I've been on the Scamazon again, and I bought this uh, Music Lily guitar pickup under saddle pizza for acoustic or classical guitar. And there's it there. £6.24 plus £1.49 delivery. I didn't think I paid that for it. And here's what we get for hard earned cash. We get this bit of wire, this metal looking thing, and uh, we get a plucker, string plucker. Now, I'm not a musician, I don't own a guitar, but we'll see what this thing is here. We can see the wee ribs there, where the guitar strings would go on this. So this goes under the what they call the saddle, and uh, plug it in the amplifier. I take it. Loads of videos before on the channel. That's mainly using looking at these wee pizzos, and uh, when you compress them, they generate a voltage. So that's basically what they do. And uh, I did a video one time where we got a salt crystal, and uh, squeezed it, and got. A wee tiny tiny bit of voltage out of that and that thing there that disc is the main component of these pulse sensors and uh, a lot of guys make their own and they just get the wee disc and put it in some sort of some sort of holder there you know so uh, they seem to be all the rage at the moment I don't own a guitar but sure we'll put a bit of rope between the two vases so as with all these piezo type sensors, or sometimes known as delta sensors, because they measure differences, they never measure oscillations, and that's what this we we pick up here that we've uh, cable tied to this bit of bit of rope basically, and uh, we've connected the directly to the scanner. So we'll give this a pluck, and there's our oscillation of that bit of rope. So. What use is this? Now, I haven't invented this at all, of course. This is a, a pizza. That's We've seen this before. I'm sure a lot of people know all about it. But the invention is, what can we use this for? And yeah, you may be able to think of a few uses that I haven't thought of, but I'm gonna show you a couple of wee things that I've just been experimenting with. And uh, yeah, we'll see if it's any use. I'm quite sure we've seen on the YouTube, especially, a lot of guys using these pulse sensors to pick up vibrations. And yeah, it's, this is the same thing, you know? So, it'll probably do that, all right? It'll probably pick up the vibrations and, you know, a noisy wheel burn or a noisy pulley or something. But, uh, is there anything else? Another thing I noticed is that it detects a change in temperature. So we're in the research laboratory here and uh, we'll have it cable tied to a mixer tap. So we can put out cold water flowing through this tap and also hot water. So if we turn on the cold water, we can see the voltage decreasing down the screen. And then when the difference isn't there, it'll go back up again. So we'll just scoot that a bit, a bit more. We'll take them down. So we'll change that to the hot. So that's the hot tap. A bit of disturbance in the force there, but we can see it leveling out again. We can see it leveling out, so it raises up and then goes down. So if we turn that off and cool it away down again, drops away off the scale. And I'll come back up. So that's just another property that I noticed to that changes with temperature. Oh, that's the plug hole. Oh, this is splash proof. 
This is my car, and it's a GDI engined car, petrol. So this is a high pressure fuel pump, and this is the high pressure fuel line that's feeding a rail with, uh, that feeds then the injectors. So we're gonna see if we can see the injectors pulsing the fuel as they open. So I have a yellow trace there. And that is onto its sink with the primary ignition of uh, cylinder one. So that's uh, their ignition sparks there. So I'm going to hold this on that fuel line. And remember, the fuel line feeds the whole reel. So we're going to see all the pulses. So I'll just see if I can hold this on here. It's quite, it's quite tight or not work. So I need to hold it on tight so there's no uh, vibration. Let's see now. And those are pulses from our fueling. So let's just bring that down. So, those are pulses from our high pressure fuel line. You can see the oscillations there. I'll just stop the engine there, that's better. And, uh, well, what can we determine from all this? Well, it's all about comparisons, isn't it? You know, so you're looking for, you're looking for one that is different from the other one. Now, this is uh, a perfectly running engine. There's nothing wrong with this, so we're not gonna see anything. But uh, I traded on a, I had a common rail diesel, and the advantage with the common rail diesels is they have an injector pipe per injector. So what we could maybe do is we could disconnect one of the injectors and induce a fault. So I did that when I had a Volkswagen in. Here we have a Volkswagen TDI with a two liter common rail diesel engine in it. And we'll just take the engine cover off and get a look at this. So we can see our four high pressure lines there, just about. And uh, on this particular one, we have injectors with like a wee bird cage there. They're known as mass solenoid injectors so these are solenoid injectors in this and you can tell that with this sort of bird cage design on the injector there so what we'll do is we'll, we'll scope this on the electrical side and we'll also see if we can see the the fuel uh, going in in comparison with the the injection a couple of these injectors back probed here so we'll just get a wee look at to see what that looks like to start with the electrical side of it. Okay, engine run. And there's those couple of injectors firing. So, let's have a wee look. See what they look like. So, you can see here with three ejection events. Uh, back to where we're again and we'll see if we can see the fuel get in with our wee tool so I'm just going to hold our wee pickup on the line here on this number three injector so that'll be the green trace on the scope Hold it on there like that. We'll put that third channel on and we'll just take away the first channel so we're not really interested in it now. And uh, 
trigger and chase two. Hold her steady. And we'll hold her retool on the pipe. And hold it steady. There we go. I'll hold these down a bit. Okay, two holds. So we can see a lot of traces. So what I need to do is I'll need to just zoom in on this part. Slot cylinder three, the green chase, is the solenoid. The three injections. And we can see it getting patchy there whenever the fuel is being delivered by holding our little tool on the injector pipe. You can see the hash is getting a lot bigger with fuel flow. Just turn the uh, peak detect on. Let's see if we can see it better. So we'll disconnect that injector. So the injector disconnected and our wheel tool is on the fuel line and we can see it's still trying to fire it and uh, there's a bit of hash there but uh, what we'll do is we'll look at one that is firing and we'll go back on to channel one again and we'll put a trigger on this one. You can see it a lot harsher on the one that is firing. That's the one that is firing there. A lot harsher. So there is a wee bit of interpretation required for this. Let's see, we'll go back on to Turn that and off. And go back onto the one that's, that's disconnected. Put the trigger on. And chase two. And it's still is a bit ashy. But maybe not as much. that again. So we're on one that is firing now. I'll put the trigger and chase one. Yeah, so it's the ash is a lot bigger than chase one. So I think it's all about comparing. Yeah, ash is a lot bigger than the one that is firing. Okay, well that's the high pressure side. Um, what about the low pressure side then? I wonder if we see anything in that. So I've actually just put a couple of cable ties on that there so that uh, I don't have to hold it on. So we'll get you on the scope. So I'm going to command the uh, fuel pump on from a better action control. So we'll see if we can see anything in the scope. And stop. Well, there was a bit of a ripple there. It wasn't very much, no. So we'll see. Yeah, that's something there. So I'll tell you what they. Zoom away out now, and we'll uh, 
Melia Barrett. Yeah, so we can't see it. It is, it is seen out there. Yeah, pretty subtle, but uh, Pizzo just sees the the change there. So it's just that wee flip of it going off and on there, but can't see it. So there you go. Is this thing able to pick up injector fuel flow? So whenever the injector opens and f uh, fuel passes through the pipe, can this little oscillator see that? So if you have a bad injector that isn't injecting the same amount of fuel or too much fuel in comparison to the other ones, then will we be able to see that? Well, I think, I think we can. I think we can see it there. So, yeah, time will tell. It's just a wee experiment, and uh, I'm sure there's there's maybe other uses for it. But it's a it's a an injector fuel flow tester is what I'm thinking of uh, using it for. But uh, make come in handy, make go to the back of the drawer and be forgotten about, of course. But uh, you never know. So the invention, as I said before, is in the creativity of. Uh, what you can actually maybe use this for. There's nothing new about it. It is a, an ordinary pizza, just like these other ones. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's really that successful on the low pressure side there. Uh, I think the wee oscillation that it was seeing on the rubber pipe was basically the rubber pipe, pipe expanding whenever, uh, you know, we, we turned the, the fuel pump on there in the Volkswagen. But certainly on the high pressure side, uh, we're, so we're seeing something. So there you go. So maybe you got something out of that. Maybe you enjoyed it. And uh, all the best. And thanks very much. And 